Let's see. What are these? Oh. Oh, wait. Who is that? That almost looks like me. But I no, never, I, never I was thinking that like was that. like Tom Driscoll or... It, uh, yeah. I don't know. Look, delivering in a pickup. As you go through life, you have expectations which yeah. are never exactly fulfilled. Sometimes they're exceeded. Sometimes they're different. Sometimes they're not as good. And that is, boy, that is a common theme in a very field. They, they never do exactly what it is you had in mind. Uh, but, but you can always learn. Yeah. The commitment to great flavor and great eating quality, it's, it's, it sounds easy and it's not so easy because everything you work toward has an important place. It's important to have fruit that has yields that allow, you know, efficient production and reasonable prices for the product on the shelf. Um, you know, we've got to have disease resistance and, and easy to pick. So there's a lot of factors, and if you kind of try to be great at all of them, you're, you're not as good at any of them. So what, what I would say though is, is we have to always remember that the only reason this fruit exists is for the sheer pleasure of eating it. I mean, that's why we exist as berry growers. So we have to give absolute priority to eating quality. The whole design of our business and the whole purpose to me is to do something really great. And if it starts being about uh, the profitability of the business, you start doing things for the wrong reasons. And that's when mediocrity can sort of creep in. And I, I really think we, we really have to continually challenge ourselves to be, you know, better than we were yesterday. The breeding program is probably the greatest avenue to discovering what we can do better and more with, you know, creating berry fruit, because you can always improve. All these plants are so complex. Um, you know, a strawberry has eight sets of chromosomes, so its possibility for variation is incredible. And when you have that much possibility for variation, you have that much possibility for creating combinations that can just be really good. It's somewhat unusual in our industry, or it is unusual in our industry to commit as much as we do to, to R&D, but it was, it was really the basis for founding Driscoll's was to develop new, better varieties. That's why the first group of farmers got together. My father was one of them and um, created this company to do that. So we've, we have this sort of fundamental commitment to research and development. One thing I know that it's been true in my family, it's true in a lot of families, the kids tell you the truth. And sometimes in my family, they're pretty uh, willing to just say so. These are no good. These are better. And, uh, or the other thing is you just won't eat them. If I look, you know, back a long ways, I'm proud that we've, the, the, it's not just our family, but the, you know, whole group of people that go back you know, even before the founding of Driscoll's, have managed to stay committed to a, to a line of business and discover new avenues and, and new approaches, added, you know, new berries to the mix. Our mission and the challenge of being dedicated to it, so, you know, to continue, mission to continually delight consumers through alignment with our customers and our growers. It's so, so simple and so straightforward and such a personal challenge. And so I'm proud of that mission and it takes a lot of commitment. <laughs>